Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. Health anxiety is a term that combines two disorders from the DSM-5, somatic symptom disorder and illness anxiety disorder. Previous versions of the DSM called it hypochondriasis, and from this term came the pejorative label hypochondriac. People with health anxiety obsess over bodily functions like breathing, or their heartbeat, or physical imperfections like skin blemishes, or physical complaints like headaches and stomach aches, and lightheadedness. When you have health anxiety, you catastrophize even minor things. For example, you may take feeling queasy after two meals in a row to mean that you're exhibiting early signs of stomach cancer. Another way this can look is by overreacting to any body sensations. You can fixate on sensations and then analyze them so that you can assign the sensation to an illness. You don't appreciate that if you have heart palpitations, which is feeling your heart beat in your chest, that sensation can be because you're anxious. Instead, in your mind, it must be because of a physical illness and a serious one at that. Then you go get a medical workup and when that shows no clear signs or physical reason for your symptoms, you start to believe that the doctors missed something, leading you to seek second and third opinions. People with health anxiety often see multiple doctors and get many unnecessary medical tests, feeling that the medical establishment isn't taking their concerns seriously. With health anxiety, you develop false beliefs about your symptoms and the medical system at large. Here are six examples of misconceptions people with health anxiety have. Number one, my physical anxiety symptoms will escalate to something that kills me in my sleep. So even if you come to terms with the idea that your dizziness and chest tightness is anxiety and not heart disease, you still believe anxiety symptoms can get so bad that they do permanent damage or kill you. Number two, normal medical test results means that my illness is undetectable. You are not reassured by normal tests. It just means that the doctors can't see it or find it because the tests aren't sensitive enough. Number three, even if my exam is normal today, the disease could still materialize tomorrow. This is an extension of the idea that negative test results means that someone is missing it or that your illness is just festering in your body undetected. Number four, doctors can't know what's wrong without running all available tests. If you go see a doctor and they don't run tests, you don't trust them or think that they aren't taking you seriously because the only way to diagnose an illness is to do some kind of test, which is not true by the way. Some disorders have obvious physical signs associated with them that can be seen by doing a physical exam. Some people refer to these signs as clinical stigmata. Number five, I continuously check for new symptoms so I will know when the illness is getting worse. This is called body surveillance. You see yourself as the only one you can trust to keep up with the progression of the illness that you believe you have. So you need to stay alert to catch a new sign or pick up on the worsening of the current symptom. When your symptoms seem like they are worsening, you won't hesitate to go back to the doctor and hopefully get more tests. Number six, the more I learn about the illness, the better I will be at helping the doctors find the cause. This is the misconception that keeps you researching and Googling your symptoms. You know doctors are busy, and because you believe they may be missing something, you see it as vital to learn as much as you can to help your doctors figure it out. How do you develop these misconceptions? People with health anxiety have a conditioned response to their physical symptoms. You come to associate feeling anxious with physical sensations and conclude that all physical sensations are dangerous and represent hidden signs of catastrophic disease. Researching your illness, seeking reassurance, and body surveillance all reinforce the conditioned response. What can you do about this? Usually people with health anxiety don't seek mental health treatment because they don't believe their problems are mental. You only see a therapist or psychiatrist as a late stage intervention after your doctor treating the physical symptoms has reached a dead end. One effective therapy intervention is interoceptive exposure. 
Interoception is a term that means awareness of your internal body state. When you have physical symptoms with your anxiety, you can become hyper aware of every body sensation that you associate with feeling anxious. This association is the conditioning response. The physical sensations trigger more anxiety, and when you experience these sensations, you become conditioned to associate them with a fearful state, and your anxiety can spiral. Interoceptive exposure is a type of exposure exercise where you intentionally provoke a physical sensation and tolerate the distress the sensation causes. With this activity, you disprove your false beliefs about the catastrophic consequences that you expected by tolerating the distress. You also desensitize yourself to the extreme reactions to the body sensations. For example, dizziness is a bothersome experience, but if you desensitize yourself to it through exposure, you learn to see it as a nuisance and not assume it's a precursor to something more dangerous. To practice interoceptive exposure, you identify the body sensations you find most problematic. Here are some questions to help you identify the sensations. What physical sensations make you believe you have a severe condition? What physical sensations signal that you're getting ready to have an attack of panic? What sensations are you afraid to experience because you fear they will lead to a more considerable negative consequence? Once you have your list of sensations, group them by body system or types of sensations. For example, if we use the symptom of dizziness, you would attach it to the head body system. Palpitations would be paired with the heart system. Then you choose an activity that triggers the sensation that you fear. If you're trying to provoke dizziness, you could spin in a swivel chair for one minute or spin while standing for 30 seconds. After you perform the activity, notice how you feel. Write down what you noticed in your body and write down what thoughts went through your mind during the activity. If you keep doing this, you can get to where you are less fearful of experiencing dizziness and break the conditioned response of believing dizziness is a sign of serious illness. This is a simple example of interoceptive exposure. There are many exercises you can do to intentionally trigger the symptoms or body sensations that make you anxious and make you think that you have a serious illness. The exercises are not dangerous for people who do not have serious medical conditions, but if you have a health condition that may be aggravated by these kinds of activities, check with your doctor about your ability to engage in them. I have a section of my book, Why Am I So Anxious, that goes into more detail on interoceptive exposure and an appendix that gives you a list of exercises to trigger sensations for different body symptoms. It's available for pre-order at getyourpreorder.com. If you pre-order it before August 16th, you get a bonus guide with additional information, including charts and tables. If you're watching this video after August 16th, you can order the book from Amazon as a hardcover, ebook, or audiobook. Check out this video right here for more on health anxiety. Thanks for watching. See you next time.